bring in 2024 presidential candidate Chris Christie. He's a two-term uh, governor of New Jersey and a former U.S. Uh, attorney. Good to see you, Governor. Good always, to be here, guys. Always good to see you. How's your wife? She's good. She's great. She's watching. I'm confident. I'm confident. It's her favorite she, show. Well, she, she watches, watches every all morning. The time. God she bless watches, that. Every watches. morning. Can you can you give me anything positive, any silver lining of, of that um, excrement show no. from yesterday? No, I can't. But you know, it, look, it just shows. It gives people more of a concern about our party being a governing party. And, 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 and that's bad for all of us well who for president right now, right? And, and look, Kevin's mistake right in the beginning was taking the job under those circumstances. The only way to get it. You know, I said, well, I said to him at the time, I you should tell them, go find somebody else. Because there would have been no but one Chris, else who could have gotten Chris, to it was 18. always one person. It was always one person. But usually you had a margin of 30 or 40 in your party. Well, we can thank and Donald Trump for that. That's what, so tra trace it back to that. It of wasn't, course. It wasn't the one person thing. It was that there were only, oh, it, it was the margin was, because there was no red wave no. because all the MAGA candidates, and extreme you, MAGA. You heard from Matt Rosendale. Um, you Another know, one. And, uh, who said he was praying right. for them not to get um, a big majority so that he could be more influential. I mean, so you got these guys who yesterday were literally just trying to raise money for themselves, get on TV. That's all they care about. And by the way, the creation of, creator of all of this is Trump. Right. I mean, this is he right. set this type of politics in motion. Started with Purdue in Georgia and, yep. and said to McConnell, "I hope you lose, so, so we lost yeah. the Senate." That's right. And Republican, so Republicans, I should just start saying we. No, but Republicans lost the Senate. Yeah, they did. And and, look, and Trump did that because he didn't care. Um, because he only cares about himself. And then the 2022 midterms, lost. that, that didn't happen. Well, so got uh, look, when, when, you, when you put candidates up like they did in New Hampshire for the Senate, like they did in Pennsylvania with Dr. Oz, who's a, who's a guy I've known for a long time, was on both of my finance committees when I ran for governor. But you know why? Because he's from New Jersey. Um, and he, you know, so you, you run him for Senate in Pennsylvania. You know, I, I, I spoke to my mother-in-law who the time was 94 years old she's now 96 and i asked her um, so who are you voting for in the primary and she said i'm voting for mccormick and i said so why'd you sign mccormick she goes oh christopher dr oz is from new jersey um, right so, i mean you know sometimes people get too cute and too smart for their own good people understand basics and she understood that she's lived in pennsylvania her whole life she wanted a Republican senator that actually was from Pennsylvania, not somebody who's from New Jersey. Chris, what does this all mean to the business community? Because we've been trying to mull that around. Just the potential for a government shutdown, the inability to find compromise, the inability to actually govern and get things done, no matter which party you're looking at at this I point. don't think there'll be a shutdown, Becky, because McCarthy showed that you can prevent that from happening by, you know, the folks, the 210 in the House on the Republican side who were ready to vote with Democrats to have a continuing resolution for 45 days. I, I'm not worried as much about a shutdown, but what I am worried about is you look at our long-term economic issues that we have to deal with. We have to deal with the debt. And in that, I, you know, I don't agree with Gates because I don't think he has any core on that. But my point is like, you, need, you need to have a stable majority to be able to do that. What happens in Ukraine? What, what's Zelensky saying when he wakes up this morning, right? What are our allies in Europe saying? Let's remember something. The last time we turned our back on a shooting war in Europe, it cost us half a million American lives, ultimately. And I don't understand these people who are making Ukraine this kind of dividing line on this stuff. And it's going to hurt our relationships around the world, and it's going to wind up costing American lives, ultimately, either in Europe or in Asia. I got a question for you. So in the, in the six o'clock hour, we were talking about Trump. Mm -hmm. And Joe says to me, we were talking about TDS and this idea, of, right. you know, he says, you know, deplorables and all of this. What does this whole situation mean for you, for your election, and the idea that there are a strong base of support still for President Trump? Why is that? What is that? And, and how do you rationalize the situation? Look, I think there's three elements to the Trump support, right? There, there's an element of folks who are, they just, they never really involved in politics much before, didn't get involved in voting much before. He spoke to them, their anger, and his anger is something they can relate to. 
and they're rock solid for him and, and probably wouldn't support anybody else, right? There's an element of folks who it's just purely tribal. They feel like they have to keep the jersey on all the time. And if they, uh, if they say that they even have some concerns with Trump, that means they're for Biden. They can't be for Biden. And so they, they just put that away. Then the third element is the people who are just scared because they look at it and say, I, I guess I have to be for Trump because he's ahead in all the polls and there's no alternative to that. Um, I think that last element of people will break away from him. And that's where you're, that. you think your opportunity is. Correct. Yep. But clearly, even Matt Gates thinks politically for him that there is an audience for what he's doing. There he is. thinks that he well, can become the there, governor of Florida, there potentially, there well, there is on the back it's, it's of the, uh, this kind of thing. No, it's a fiscal. He, 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 all, eight of those people were hiding behind the $33 trillion. That's all they said. They right. said it again and, and again. And, and, and they got a point. But, but Florida's a red state now. Um, Andrew. And so could Gates, will Gates win a, a gubernatorial primary? Like, who knows? But look, at, Matt Gates is not a whole heck of a lot different than Ron DeSantis. If you look at the things that Ron DeSantis did and Ron DeSantis said when he was in the House, he was not a whole lot more liked than, than, than Matt Gates is in that caucus. Matt and Gates has some, serious ethical, has some serious ethical investigations, that, that, potential illegal activities. Look, and I think you're I right, Becky, and I think that like, Gates looks at this as the best defense is a good offense. Right. And just keep pushing and saying that he's setting this up so that when they do come back, if they do, with some serious ethics charges against him, he's going to say, oh, well, it's all rigged. We've heard this before. It's all rigged. It's because I went against McCarthy. Now they're going after me. Um, but I think that the, if you continue to look at the early states, in the, in the polls that have a decent amount of, of sample, Trump is below 40 percent, both in Iowa and in New Hampshire. That's a bad sign for him. Imagine, Andrew, in the, in the Democratic primary, if there was a poll that showed Biden under 40 percent. And why isn't there? That's the other. If, if you want to do whataboutism, I mean, you talk about you know, not staring a problem right in the face, which is Republicans with Donald Trump. Well, Democrats have nothing but Joe Biden, and, well, and with with Kamala Harris waiting in the wings. Well, tell me how the, they're tell me how they're rationalizing that without trying to figure. Well, out. The, the people who have to answer those questions are folks like Gavin Newsom and J.B. Pritzker and Cory Booker and oh, others. Josh Shapiro, right, who all Colorado, are, right? No, but look, the truth is they don't too, want to run. They're, well, they don't want to run because they're too fearful that they're going to split up, split split a party at a time when they are looking at uh, the GOP and looking at Trump. If Trump was not the leader, I think you would have a completely different situation on the Democratic side. I think people would I don't think be very would, willing to no, split that whole situation no, up they would never and run, run against him. Their premise is uh, flawed, yeah, though, Andrew. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying, yeah. but that is the I, conceit. I think their premise is flawed, though, because, you know, you and I were at a similar yeah. uh, meeting recently, and, and I heard there were a number of Democrats there, and they're all scared to death that Biden's not going to make it, um, that he's not going to physically get there. Um, and, and then the only thing standing between Donald Trump for, from their perspective and the White House is an 82-year-old Joe Biden who on most days doesn't seem to be able to put, you know, eight coherent sentences together in a row. Words. Right? I mean, it is, it, it is incredible. It's one of the reasons I'm running is because you can't have these two people be the choice. And, and you... And everybody says, well, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to thread the needle. I don't know how you're going to win this thing. Well, you know, the alternative to me is unacceptable. So if the alternative is unacceptable and you feel like you have something to offer, it's not acceptable for you to stand on the sidelines and just carp and complain like a lot of people that we all know who come here and, and whether it's from this business or whether it's from Wall Street or whether it's from other parts of business in this country who all say the same things to me. But then they're all waiting on the sidelines. I, I want to see how this plays out.